Hello, beautiful people. Losing Drea here, and it is Sunday morning, early at about 4:39 in the morning. I had just gotten off work just a little while ago. It is the 27th of January, 2013. It is the sixth day of my uh, no wheat, no gluten, um, no unnatural sugars and carbs uh, free week. I started on the 21st of January, was the first day that I began, as I had reported in an earlier video, um, I think it's titled No Wheat, No Gluten, uh, or Gluten Free, Wheat Free, whatever, um, but pretty much I'm just uh, going to do a little bit of an early report of what's going on with me. Now, I don't know why, but the camera kind of looks like I have red splotches up here. And I have to say, um, my face is actually pretty clear. I don't have uh, any of the usual, um, I usually have a lot of scaly, dry, patchy stuff uh, all around here and here and all up in through here. And the lighting's going in and out, and I don't know, it looks weird. I look like I have something going on here. And I really don't so I don't know where it's coming from. My face has actually never been clearer ever since I started this um, wheat-free thing. Uh, I felt lighter, not so bloated, um, not hungry all the time. You know, before I was always hungry and always snacking, and now i got to remind myself that it's time to eat or time to eat a snack or whatever because I know that, you know, I have to eat a little something in between or my metabolism is going to slow down. So, uh, a couple of people have been asking me, because I belong to several different groups on Facebook, uh, you know, who have seen that I've gone wheat-free, why did I decide to go wheat-free? Well, I'm telling you guys right here and now, if you hadn't already watched my other video, that the reason I decided to go wheat-free is my trainer at my gym, uh, before I left there on, um, I believe it was Saturday, Friday or Saturday, I went to the gym and she handed me a couple of recipes for some power bars and some stuff. She started to tell me that she eats uh, totally gluten-free, um, doesn't eat grains. I don't think she eats pretty much hardly any grains of any kind. Uh, doesn't eat olive oil. Says that when you cook olive oil, you're basically um, cooking out the properties of it. It's okay to eat it raw. You'll get the properties from it raw, but when you cook it, um, it's not good. And she was suggesting several different things that I can do that she does. She cooks a lot of stuff in the wok. She makes a lot of chicken and uh, fish. Um, or no. I think she just said chicken. She doesn't do fish. Yeah, she don't like seafood. But anyways, um, I do like seafood. I'm not going to give that up. But what she was telling me was to get this book by Dr. Davis called Wheat Belly and or look it up online. So, of course, me, being the good internet guru type computer person I am, I looked it up online. And I immediately was brought to Dr. Davis's blog, uh, for which was free for me to join. And now I get his newsletter. And I looked into further uh, looking into getting the book, which I have my uh, Kindle Fire right here. It's not mine, it's my mom's. Um, she doesn't really use it that much anymore. I'm trying to get her to learn how to use it. I wish she would. My brother bought it for her, and um, it is a wonderful tool. And if she would use it more, I'd be apt to go get my own. But because she doesn't use it, I don't want it to just sit around. So I'm kind of using it uh, for a book anyways. I have some money, and I'm going to be downloading it. I just didn't know. I mean, if you have a Kindle, I was kind of worried about buying a book on here, and then what if she does take over and doesn't let me get it back? what happens to my book, or what if, God forbid, something should happen to this, what happens to my book. So I've been a little hesitant on buying the book on that and not just buying the paper copy. But for me, I have problems seeing with my eyes. I can't read um, unless it's a very large print book. I have a hard time reading it. Therefore, I just basically feel I'd read better, just like I do on the Internet, if I could either blow it up, enlarge it, or just look at it with the lighting behind it, as you do when you read um, from these book readers. Anyways... So I started, I went out to Amazon, and you can look inside the book, and you can read through the first so many pages, or through so many pages with so many they might omit from that preview. And I was just amazed in just the first few pages that I read. And then I further went on to look on YouTube, since I am on YouTube doing my videos. Um, 
and basically uh, saw some videos from Dr. Davis where he did some seminars and stuff in front of a group of uh, other people and it was recorded and now is to be seen on YouTube. I think it says um, wheat belly, the unhealthy wheat or something something to that effect. If you look up Dr. Davis and you look up wheat belly, you'll find a slew of different uh, videos on him and it's the one that's one point something something point something. It's like the longest video out there. And what's good about that video, because I watched some of the others and they were just really radio broadcasts and just a couple of pictures that just stay frozen on the, the screen. But what's good about that video is it actually shows Dr. Davis himself with a couple of slide screens as he's going through talking about the things and his findings and how he came about uh, finding what he found and so on and so forth. But what I'm also finding out now in doing further research, because I am so very interested in this because of the wonderful results in just the short time that I've been doing this. Now, I didn't just start researching this today, six days into this. I started re researching this when I first did, and I have not stopped. Um, and Monday I was my first day wheat-free, and I immediately started feeling better, except for the fact that I did come home from the gym on Monday. I was really, really sick. I do not believe it had anything whatsoever to do with the fact that I hadn't eaten any wheat products, because typically speaking, I eat a lot of vegetables and fruits and things, uh, nuts, things that don't generally involve wheat anyways. They may involve rice, they may involve oats, uh, but I don't usually do dairy unless I eat cheese and I hadn't been eating any of that and um, as well basically you know Cheerios in the morning to me that's oats, a whole grain oat, um, but nothing to do with wheat. So um, yeah, outside of eating Cheerios and a little bit of brown rice one night through this whole period I have not eaten any wheat whatsoever. And um, so, like I said, Monday I came home, I got sick. I know that my mother and my husband both had the same flu-like virus bug thing in our tummies. Um, they had the same symptoms. Neither of them are doing the same wheat-free challenge as I am, so I know that it is uh, and there was a non-related um, thing that just happened to happen the same day I decided to do this. And pretty much uh, what I found is that I've had a significant weight loss. Now the first day that I got sick, I have to tell you, it was although I didn't feel good and I was a little lethargic and out of it and whatnot and feeling like I just wanted to go to sleep and I didn't really eat too much the rest of that day when I came home on Monday. Um, I was in the bathroom. It was not a pretty sight, not to get into too much information. But it wasn't too serious. I must have went to the bathroom about six different times. I actually counted them because I have been logging everything that's been going on since I decided to go weed free because I want to know, is this working? Uh, but anyways, getting back on track. So, I don't believe it had anything to do with that, but the following, uh, the following next two days, I had a significant weight loss of five pounds. Five pounds in just like two days. Um, I don't have the numbers in front of me, although I did, um, actually I do have the numbers in front of me. Um, so, yeah, I got sick, it was the 21st of, uh, January. I was 240.2 pounds the morning that I went to the gym. I don't know, I had eaten an Asian buffet and got, Tom came into town on Sunday and I weighed in at 238.6 but then later in the evening Sunday night going into early Monday morning uh, is when Tom showed his ugly face and that accounted why I was having such cravings the previous day on Sunday and went and ate Asian Buffet. So between Asian Buffet and Tom I had gained, I had a gain of, um, of uh, 1.4 pounds. So then, weighing 240.2 pounds uh, and getting sick, I literally, uh, by the next day, I was 235.2 pounds and had that 5-pound loss. By the following day, I was still sick. Um, but I did work, and I had eaten. And um, aside from just being around the house, I did 1,960 steps, 0 0.8 miles. 
25 calories I burned off on my pedometer, so it said, and 1.2 grams of fat. And I had a one pound, another one pound weight loss. Um, so I was now 234 pounds by uh, Wednesday, the 23rd. Then came Thursday, the 24th. Try to put this so I can see it. Come Thursday the 24th, I worked, and I also did not go to the gym. I have not yet been back to the gym since I got ill. Uh, but I weighed 235 pounds even, um, and that was a one-pound gain, okay? And uh, I had 5,467 steps. I have no idea how. Maybe I was tossing and turning in my sleep. I don't know how I got that many steps in that particular day. It said that I did 2.4 miles on my pedometer, burned 77 calories and 3.7 grams of fat. So come Friday, I was down again, 0.2 pounds, point, you know, 2 ounces, I guess, 0.02. Uh, so I was back down 234.8. Saturday, another 2 down, 0.2 down. I was 234.6. Also, again, working, but no working out. Um, so, basically right now I'm on week 69, today is my weigh-in day, week 69, it's Sunday, I will go to sleep now, I will wake up later and weigh myself, whatever I weigh, we will see from last week's weigh-in of 238.6 until now how much of a weight loss or gain that I have. Um, I will say that yesterday, um, Saturday morning, after getting off of work Friday night into Saturday morning, I ate, uh, I usually don't, I try not to eat before I go to bed, no matter how hungry I feel, but I ate about 50 blueberries, because they're not a lot of calories, and I ate one of those little uh, Laughing Cow Creamy, Sw Laughing Cow Light Creamy Swiss or creamy Swiss light, whatever. It's a little wedge of cheese. It's 35 calories. I'm not really a Swiss cheese eater. not really basically a cheese eater. But remember in the beginning of the video I was saying I don't generally eat dairy unless I eat cheese because I have almond milk. And I've been on the almond milk thing for, gosh, probably the last six months if not longer. So um, I stopped drinking whole milk went to organic milk and then from organic milk stopped drinking the organic milk when I found out that almond milk really was not that bad and it was good for me for what I wanted it for which was basically just smoothies and cereal. There's absolutely no taste uh, difference for me from that to milk whatsoever that I can tell. I drink the original unsweetened almond milk uh, from Almond Breeze. I was drinking silk that was only 35 calories but I'd much rather have the five more calories per cup and have 40 calories and have the Almond Breeze because it's a lot thinner. It's not as thick as the silk. Uh, I also make a very good figure friendly, even though it has loads of regular tabled granulated sugar in it, um, but I make that as figure friendly as possible because I don't use the traditional evaporated or whole milk in the recipe and I use brown rice with that. Um, with that said, I'm not going to be eating any of that, and I haven't eaten any of that this week. And I'm thinking about the possibility of totally, totally cutting out grains altogether from my diet. That will mean no cereal whatsoever, no oats, no steel-cut oats, no oatmeal. Um, not unless I can find one that is totally, totally uh, gluten-free. And gluten is a Latin word for anyone that doesn't know that means glue. And if you know your body and you know inside your intestines where all the foods pass through and you get all your nutrients is, um, how do I explain it? It's, it's like you have this, like this is your intestines. And in your intestines you have these little, um, like phalanges or I don't know what they are. They're like, you know, they catch the food and they help the nutrients so that you, your body can suck up the nutrients. But when you eat gluten, they glue down those things so they can't get caught and they can't go through and it's actually blocking your body from getting nutrients and stuff that you eat from the whole natural foods that are good for you, like the fruits and the vegetables and the nuts um, and eggs. So 
what you should be eating when you don't eat grains is typically nuts, meats, eggs, fruits, and veggies. I have some notes here that I made because I don't want to forget to tell you guys anything. And also, you know, just remember, if you're going to your grocery store, it's much easier to shop the outer perimeter of your store. Stay out from the middle aisles. You don't need the processed foods. You don't need the packaged foods. No barcodes. It's basically all it means. It doesn't mean you have to go and you have to buy something that says gluten-free because a lot of the gluten-free commercially made products that claim that they're gluten-free not, are not necessarily good for you because they have other things in them, other fillers and things to make them well, like breads and stuff, and they still need that, that thing that kind of helps them congeal together, and so they put like tapioca solids and stuff in them, and I've heard that's not good for you either, but I ate that cheese going all the way back, I don't know why I'm all over the place, I'm sorry, I'm obviously tired, a little bit hungry too, um, but I ate that laughing cow cheese, and yesterday morning, uh, I woke up in excruciating pain. It must have been about 10 o'clock in the morning. It was about exactly about six hours after I had eaten this cheese. And I barely could make it to the bathroom. I had to force myself to go. It was like I knew I had to relieve myself somehow. But the pain shot from my belly all the way up into my chest. I still have that slight feeling and I'm afraid to move or do anything wrong because it was the worst pain I think I had ever felt in my life. I've had some pretty seriously bad pains in my life, but that was so horrible. I was literally crying and pleading and begging with Jesus to just take away the pain, which he eventually, with the help of two Advil liquid gels, um, I believe answered my prayers. All I wanted to do was just get better so I can go to church, and I'm happy to say that I did feel a lot better, was able to finally go to church, and um, I got my worship on, which is all I really wanted to do yesterday, regardless to how I felt. Um, so yeah, um, you know, I feel like I'm, I feel thinner. Uh, I was walking around in a pair of sweatpants. I feel like I kind of, like when I'm going to the gym, I feel like I'm living in my workout outfits. I have you know, my workout pants, my workout jacket, and usually either a sports bra or another little shirt that I wear underneath. And unless it's, like, really, really hot out I, that I would take my workout jacket on, I'm, like, living in my workout clothes. I feel like I shouldn't need to buy anything but my workout clothes. And because they're stretchy, they should help keep me going for a long time as I'm quickly, ob obviously, losing the weight. Um, but the only thing that I've experienced is this little bit of a slight headache that kind of comes and goes. It's not a sharp pain. It's nothing like any of the headaches I've had been experienced. I'm, I'm usually one to get very bad migraines. I have not gotten a migraine since I started on this wheat-free kick. The cheese, I believe, is what made me sick. It is a dairy product. It has skim milk and, I don't know, I, I looked it up on, um, line and, and tried to figure out uh, exactly what was in it. Aside from 35 calories, it has 1.5 grams of total fat, 1 gram saturated fat. It has 5 milligrams cholesterol, 210 milligrams of sodium, 1 gram carb, 1 gram sugar, and 2 grams protein. And that's why I grabbed it. It was in there. I had bought them for hubby, and I grabbed this little wedge of cheese. It's little, but it's a pretty good bite-sized snack. And, um, you know, they say you can spread it on whatever. Of course, I'm not eating whatever, so I didn't spread it. You could put it on apples, even, or celery and raisins, whatever. It's not my kind of go-to food, though. And, um, yeah, so I ate this cheese, and it says that the fat is reduced from 4 grams to 1.5 grams per serving. I always have to wonder how they reduce fat and stuff that's normally all fat. Um, but it's got light cheddar, cheddar, Swiss, and semi-soft cheeses, cultured milk, and skim milk, salt, enzymes, whey, and whey is not wheat, by the way, cream, sodium phosphate, sodium citrate, and salt. At least I don't think whey is wheat. I have been eating some things with whey, but they weren't affecting me. This thing about killed me, and I'm pretty sure that's what it was, so no more laughing cow. Because I was not laughing, to say the least. And um, 
But everything else has been going okay. I did try to have my usual espresso, Cuban cafe or cafe cubano, cafe colada, whatever you Spanish people want to call it, respectfully so. Uh, I tried to have it with sweet and low because I wasn't having any added sugar and it did not taste good at all. I was ready to just put in the sweet and low and say, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna have this, uh, not care whether I got the pomita, which is the foam on the top or not. It, it just, it was horrible. I said, you know what, I'm just not going to do it. And I have not had coffee since. So the slight headaches, this dull coming and going headache might be because I'm not having caffeine. I don't drink soda. I only drink water. And the last two days, I'm happy to say, I've actually been getting my water in. Here's here's a couple of empties that I've been emptying out. And I'm not endorsing Nestle's Pure Life water, but uh, each one of these 16.9 ounce bottles of water, this is just three of several that I've already put into the recycle bin because we do believe in recycling around here in this household. So um, I've already gone over 20 minutes, almost 21 minutes already by now, and I just wanted to give you guys this update. I can't call it quick, but there was a lot of important things in here that if you're interested and you've been following me and you're wondering what I'm doing that you really felt that you needed to hear. I will be back later with my update weigh-in video uh, for today and for the week to give you a final uh, outcome of how much weight I've actually lost since going weight-free. Uh, since having a little incident with the dairy, I'm definitely not going to be introducing dairy back in. Uh, it's just the cheese and I can do without it. It'll help me if I eat my cantina bowl that I don't have the cheese or the corn chips. I can do without them and just have the beans and the salad and the chicken in there um, and guacamole, a whole natural avocado, whatever. Um, all that is good stuff and not as fattening or as heavy or as high in calories as with all the other stuff that I don't need to eat anyway. Uh, but so far so good and I'm really thinking about continuing my challenge and going for even longer because at this point, excuse me, at this point I feel if I introduce the wheat back into my diet, I'm going to be doing myself some tremendous, tremendous harm and, and probably causing myself a lot of intestinal pains. So with that said, be happy, be healthy, be beautiful, but just be you. Be the loss, be the boss, I'm sorry, I am tired. Be the boss of your own loss if you're on a weight loss journey. I always say it, you should know it. Bye, guys. Have a blessed and wonderful Sunday, and I will see you later in my next video.